In the future, the Earth was destroyed by quantum weapons, and mutants began to appear among the survivors. At the beginning of the story, we learn that the 60-minute war nearly ended all life on Earth. The survivors turned their towns and villages into nomadic cities on wheels. Now people are hunting for food and fuel, and big cities are capturing and absorbing small ones. Thus began a new era of predatory cities. A girl named Esther Shaw, whose face is half hidden by a scarf, looks into the distance through a telescope, trying to see the possible danger. Suddenly, the girl notices the approaching predatory city. Esther infiltrates a small working town, which is the target of the predator city. The town sounds an alert, all buildings are folded, engines are started and the city on wheels is ready to flee. Magnus Chrome, the mayor of nomadic London, orders the capture of the Bavarian town of Salthook in order to absorb its resources. The small town does not give up and continues to fight for freedom, while for the inhabitants of London, the capture of another town is just entertainment. Due to fleeing quickly, the Bavarian town is falling apart. London releases several harpoons, captures the city, and the mayor orders it to be sent for recycling. The huge city easily absorbs the small one. Meanwhile, young historian Tom arrives to work at the London Museum. There he meets a girl named Catherine, who is studying the history of the ancients and the causes of the 60-minute war. They walk through the halls of the museum, where one can see artifacts such as smartphones and computers. Tom wants to tell Catherine more about the war and invites her to his workshop where he sorts and repairs antiques. The guy managed to restore a video, which shows the result of using a quantum energy weapon called Medusa. Explosions all over the planet destroyed almost all life and forever changed the course of history. Tom tells Catherine that dangerous artifacts have recently started to disappear from the workshop. Now the guy hides various military objects in a cache and wants to destroy them at the opportune time, by throwing them to the bottom of the swamp. As Tom shares his secret with Catherine, the historian Herbert follows them. Having met young people in the corridor, he sends Tom to the reception point for immigrants from Salthook. Tom must select among their personal belongings objects of historical value before the workers send them to the furnace. On the lower levels of the city, migrants are examined. They are forbidden to carry weapons, but Esther Shaw manages to hide a dagger from the inspectors. At the same time, an announcement is being broadcast in the city about the search for Anna Fang, one of the agents of the League of Opponents of the Movement. Catherine helps Tom get to the lower level faster, and there they meet Thaddeus Valentine, Catherine's father and head of the Historians Guild of London. Among personal belongings, they accidentally find a nuclear inverter battery. Tom informs Thaddeus that he had a lot of such batteries, but for some reason they were seized by the Guild of Engineers. Valentine defends the old resident of Salthook from the willfulness of the customs officer and appeals to people whose city has just been swallowed up, promising them shelter, work and a chance to start a new, better life. Esther notices Valentine and her eyes fill with anger. The girl is determined to end the eminent historian. Esther draws the dagger and, before stabbing, reveals that it is revenge for Pandora Shaw, her mother. This is for my mother. <laughs> The girl manages to injure Valentine, but Tom, who runs to help the man, does not allow her to finish what she started. During the fight, the girl's scarf slips off and we see a lot of scars on her face. Esther is forced to flee, but Tom pursues her. The girl overcomes a long way, meeting many dangers, but Tom does not plan to retreat. Esther Shaw finds herself on the edge of a waste chute and has no choice but to jump right into it. Tom grabs her arm at the last second, preventing her from falling. The girl says that Valentine took the life of her mother and that he does this with everyone who gets in his way. Valentine catches up with the young people, and Esther falls deep into the chute. A shock Tom tells Thaddeus that he couldn't save the girl. The guy tells him Esther's words about her mother, and suddenly Valentine pushes Tom himself into the chute. <laughs> Nervous, Catherine rushes to the scene. Her father tells her that the railing broke down and Tom and the stranger fell down. Suddenly, Catherine notices a mechanic named Beavis Pod, who saw what really happened. The girl feels that her father is hiding something. Catherine tries to find out from her father who the stranger is. Valentine says that this is the first time he has seen her and that she may be from the Anti-Traction League. The man tries to convince his daughter that stationary and moving cities can never live peacefully. The stationary city of Shan Guo develops an alternative civilization using traditional cities that are protected by the Shield Wall. According to Valentine, the enemies are just waiting for the moving cities to weaken from hunger, and are simply obsessed with the idea of destroying London. Scout ships go looking for Tom and Esther. The girl understands that she cannot reveal herself, otherwise she will not survive. She searches Tom, who is just beginning to regain consciousness, takes the knife from him and leaves. The frightened guy asks the girl not to leave him. Esther is very angry with Tom, because she tried to get close to Valentine for six months, and the guy ruined everything. He apologizes to Esther and begs to help him get to London. 
Valentine communicates with Mayor Chrome, who informs the historian that all of the city's resources have been depleted. Thaddeus has long been developing a pioneering energy project, but the mayor is already tired of waiting. Catherine overhears their conversation, and her father explains to her that municipal Darwinism, the principle of hunting each other, according to which all predatory cities live, has already outlived its usefulness. But Thaddeus has a plan to keep London alive at all costs. Not having Magnus Chrome or Hester Shaw stop me now. Valentine goes to the laboratory, hidden from the eyes of the locals in St. Paul's Cathedral. From Dr. Twix, who is developing the project, he learns that it will take a few more weeks to complete it. The woman believes that Esther can interfere with their plans, and invites Valentine to deal with her. Twix reports that she has received news from Sharkmore Prison about the capture of a stalker, a resurrected one who broke out of control. He's after Esther Shaw, which means he can do all the work for Valentine. The historian immediately goes to the jail. Meanwhile, exhausted Esther and Tom decide to take a break. The guy talks about how he wanted to become an aviator, but because of the premature end of his parents, his dream was not destined to come true. He asks Esther about her mother, but the girl is not yet in the mood to talk about personal things and is still angry with Tom. At night, Tom spots a market town and calls people for help. Esther hurries to stop the guy, because the southerners, who went out to hunt at night, will not save them. They dodge the harpoons and suddenly fall through the hatch of a car called the Scuttlebug. Tom rejoices at the rescue and asks the owners for a ride to the nearest market town. Esther, who was shot in the leg, distrusts strangers and is wary of their hospitality. At the same time, Catherine finds Beavis Pod and asks him to tell her the truth about what happened at the shoot. The guy reluctantly explains that her father pushed Tom into the waste chute because he got in the way of Thaddeus. Beavis also tells the girl that the energy project is just a cover for something much more serious and dangerous. The guy is sure that something is being built in the cathedral, and he tried to get in there, but the building is guarded on all sides. Tom and Esther stay overnight at Scuttlebug. The girl decides to tell Tom about how Valentine took the life of her mother. Pandora Shaw was an archaeologist who traveled the world in search of artifacts. Thaddeus often visited them at home and examined ancient finds, but one day everything changed dramatically. During excavations in the territory where America used to be, Pandora found a certain suitcase that Valentine really needed. The woman did not want to give away the dangerous find, so the historian got rid of her. At the last moment, Pandora managed to hand over her pendant to Esther. The girl managed to escape, but before that, Valentine stabbed her in the face with a knife. Meanwhile, Valentine arrives at Sharkmore Prison. There he learns that the stalker is very dangerous and has already destroyed a whole city. Thaddeus goes to the punishment cell in which the resurrected is held, and asks why he needs Esther and what he will do with her when he finds her. A frightening creature with bright green burning eyes replies that Esther broke her promise and for this he will destroy her. Valentine attacks the prison, freeing the monster, and the stalker goes hunting. Toward morning, Tom informs Esther that they have changed course and are now heading south, and their owners lock them up. They try to get out of the trap, and Tom finds a hatch, but Esther refuses to jump due to her injury. Tom decides not to leave the girl and stays with her. An auction is taking place in the slave market. Esther and Tom are going to be sold into slavery. Suddenly, Anna Fang is in the crowd, a wanted resistance agent who is cracking down on crazy southerners. The mysterious woman frees Esther, who in turn helps Tom. Young people attempt to quickly get out of the city, but suddenly a stalker named Shrike appears on their way. The resurrected one says that Esther must keep the word given to him once. The girl is frightened by the unexpected meeting and rushes away from the Shrike. Here Anna Fang comes to the rescue again on her airship. She helps Esther, but Tom doesn't have time to jump inside. The girl cannot leave the guy and throws him a rope, along which he climbs onto the airship. Once safe, Esther incredulously asks Anna why she saved them. The woman says that she knew Pandora, and after her end she tried to find her daughter. And recently, she learned that Esther miraculously survived, but was sure that the little girl could not have managed it alone. At this moment, Tom realizes that Esther survived thanks to Shrike, who raised her. You were raised by the corpse. The guy is shocked, because he studied the resurrected, and their creators have put into these monster robots all the worst that can be in people. Esther is extremely displeased to hear this, because Shrike saved her life. The girl tells Tom that Shrike took her to him and took care of her as best he could. He was interested in the pendant that Pandora gave Esther, and he took it to himself with the girl in addition. He collected dolls and various broken things in which he saw his own reflection. There seemed to be some memory of family and a normal life in Shrike. One day, watching the constantly saddened girl, he suggested that Esther become the same as him, so she would be cured of her suffering forever. After all, cyborgs do not remember anything and do not feel. I will remake you. Esther agreed and promised to become a cyborg. 
but soon the girl found out that London had entered the great hunting grounds, and fled from Shrike, because she had a chance to take revenge on Thaddeus Valentine. Meanwhile, Herbert, a young scientist who saw a warehouse of military artifacts in Tom's workshop, tells Valentine about his find in the hope of a promotion. Soon after this conversation, Catherine and Beavis learn that all the exhibits were stolen and taken to the cathedral by members of the Guild of Engineers. Through a secret passage in the workshop, Catherine and Beavis make their way up the winding stairs to the cathedral to find out what is really going on there. Whatever it is they are doing in that church has nothing to do with God. With the help of stolen parts, scientists complete the construction of the machine and adjust all systems. Now London is ready for war with Sean Guo, and Valentine orders to move east. Anna Fang with Esther and Tom land in the flying city of Airhaven. Esther and Tom meet members of the anti-movement league from Sean Guo. Anna says that Pandora asked to find Esther, because only she can stop Valentine. The girl does not know how she can help, she only remembers that on that fateful evening Thaddeus took a box from her mother. Captain Cora reveals that Valentine started buying up nuclear inverter batteries half a year ago, and suddenly Tom remembers a recent conversation with Thaddeus. The guy draws the sign of the quantum weapon, and Esther confirms that she saw it on that box. Now the guy understands that Pandora has found a computer, a system for accessing the Medusa quantum energy weapon. It is possible to disable it only with the help of a special key, but it has long been lost. Medusa is live. An enraged Magnus Chrome bursts into the cathedral and demands from Valentine to explain why he is issuing orders behind his back. But suddenly he turns his attention to the newly launched Medusa and is speechless. Valentine explains that with such weapons, London is invincible. Chrome is against unleashing another war and demands to turn off the machine, but no one obeys his orders. Valentine plans to take over the whole world, and he gets rid of the mayor, as well as anyone who gets in his way. Catherine and Beavis are horrified by what they see in the cathedral. Valentine's daughter realizes that she no longer has a father. She will never be able to forgive him for what he did. There's a commotion in Air Harbor. The resistance members discover that London is moving towards Sean Guo and that they have only hours left to stop Valentine. The mad historian wants to destroy the shield wall, about which the governor must be warned. Suddenly, the flying city loses electricity. Esther realizes that Shrike has come for her. The resistance members open fire on the cyborg and do not listen to Esther, who asks them not to shoot. A fire starts. Residents of the city are in a hurry to evacuate. Suddenly, Shrike reappears in front of Esther and Tom. Tom attacks him, but the cyborg stops the guy and is about to end him. Esther begs Shrike to let him go, and then the resurrected understands that the girl loves Tom. Before his end of multiple wounds, Shrike frees Esther from her promise. He gives the girl her mother's pendant and passes out. During the blackout, Shrike reminisces about moments from their life with Esther, as well as their real child. Esther and Tom are again rescued by Anna Fang in an airship. Air Harbor burns to the ground. The anti-movement league members head to Sean Guo. Thaddeus Valentine addresses the people of London and announces his plans to take over Sean Guo. The territory of the city will become their new hunting grounds. People rejoice and enthusiastically support Valentine's ideas. Resistance members arrive in Sean Guo. Anna convinces the governor to get the fleet up in the air to hit London first. An alarm sounds in the city, all residents are on alert. Captain Cora discusses a plan for a preemptive attack with his comrades in arms. Dozens of Sean Guo warships are already in the sky. Meanwhile, the dome of Street Paul's Cathedral opens and London is ready to strike. On the altar of the League of Opponents of the Movement, Esther sees an image of a deity with a third eye, the same as the pendant that her mother left her. She opens it and finds the same key that allows her to turn off Medusa. The girl hurries to tell Tom about the find. Anna realizes that London will attack Sean Guo's shield wall in a matter of seconds and orders everyone to run away from it as far as possible. Valentine gives the command to activate the Medusa, after which the wall is shaken by a powerful explosion and engulfed in hellfire. Meanwhile, London restarts the mechanisms to deliver a second strike. Esther and Tom tell Anna about the found key. They suggest that the resistance members go to London, because this is the only chance to turn off the quantum weapon. Everyone supports the dangerous undertaking, because the Allied fleet has already been destroyed, and now they have nothing to lose. Anna, Esther, Tom and their associates are determined to break through to London through heavy fire. Not everyone survives a fierce battle with the enemy. Esther and Anna enter the cathedral. While Esther makes her way to the computer, Anna distracts Valentine and they have a sword duel, in which Anna is seriously injured. At the last second before the next blow, Esther stops Medusa. All sensors go out and the system stops working. Anna sacrifices her life and allows Esther to escape. Valentine finds his daughter and explains that he had no other choice. He had to save London at all costs. But Catherine does not believe a single word of her father. You didn't do this for any noble cause, you did it for yourself. Valentine makes one last attempt to destroy the shield wall. 
He has his henchmen destroy the wheelhouse employees, and now the city is moving towards the wall uncontrollably. Catherine sneaks into the wheelhouse and realizes that the city is about to crash into the wall. Tom, who is watching from the airship, contacts the cabin and is answered by Catherine. She is in a panic, because London cannot be stopped, as the brakes and the control panel are disabled. Tom gets the idea to blow up the engine to slow down London. <laughs> Meanwhile, Valentine tries to escape but is pursued by Esther. She is ready to shoot him, but suddenly Thaddeus informs the girl that he is her father. Startled by this news, she drops her guard and Valentine knocks the weapon out of her hands. They continue to fight when Tom suddenly appears and rescues Esther. After that, the guy shoots down Valentine's ship. Thaddeus miraculously survives the shipwreck, but soon finds himself under London's caterpillars. The Londoners, led by Catherine, are approaching Sean Guo. The governor allows the survivors to enter the city. The feud between London and the Anti-Traction League is over. Esther and Tom go on an airship trip, because they have dreamed of seeing the world all their lives. Do you think that former enemies will be able to keep the peace for a long time? Or are wars over territory and resources inevitable? Share your thoughts in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.